Hello, good evening. My name is Sharon Corley and I am one half of the couple of teachers, myself and Sarah Dunwood, who have put together a group that we have named exactly what it says on the tin, Life After Teaching, Exit the Classroom and Thrive. And Sarah and I had talked about putting together a group for quite some time because we have left the classroom and we have thrived. But in our day-to-day -day life and, and our work, we come across many, many teachers who have also done the same. They have a diverse approach to what they are doing. Some of them have gone into life coaching, some of them have gone into counselling, some have completely retrained, some have gone into tutoring. And as a body of people, we are here to offer support, advice and guidance for people who haven't quite made that leap yet, people who are thinking about making that leap, or people who have made that leap and are floundering because they don't quite know what to do. Our dear colleague, Jane McCowney, put a post and a link to our group onto the Time Z page this morning. And since then, our phones have just gone crazy with people who have resonated so much with the title of the page. And I think that tells us something. In the first instance, this group is a safe haven. It is a place for people to come and share stories. It is a place for people to ask for help and advice. It's a place where others can offer help and advice, even if it's just to say, I know exactly what you're going through and I've been there and done that. It might just be liking a post or saying, great post, can see where you're coming from. But it's an incredibly safe and supportive environment. But the second thing that we want it to be is we want it to be a great resource base for real tangible pieces of advice that can help people leave the classroom and thrive. So over the next couple of weeks, I have been in contact with some great colleagues of mine who've done exactly that, who are more than happy to come into the group and talk about their experiences, how they left, how they hemorrhaged out of teaching in some respects, how they picked themselves up, how they built themselves back up again, and how they are thriving now outside of the classroom. And I think that's sometimes as valuable as the opportunity of an offload. So Sarah and I, she'll do her video tomorrow. She'll do her video introducing herself tomorrow and she'll tell you a little bit about herself. But what I noticed this afternoon and I knew it would happen is somebody put a post on and asked about tangible pieces of advice for how to set up your own tuition company. That's me. That's what I did. That's exactly how I came out of teaching and how I managed to thrive. So apart from the welcome, what I thought I might do at the moment is give you five or ten minutes of some, some first steps advice for if you are thinking of leaving teaching and thriving through tuition. I'll do this again and again and again in the group because I think tuition more than anything is one of the great go-tos. For teachers who are thinking of leaving. So you'll see me popping up in a variety of different formats, um, offering my two penneth. So I think the best place to start really is a very brief and potted history of who I am and how I ended up leaving the classroom when I did. So my name is Sharon and in 1994 I started teaching and I'll never forget my dad saying to me, you made, you sorted, You've got a job for life. You've got a great pension. You will never need to look for work again. And I remember standing in my very first classroom in Runcorn and we were doing a wall display. I think I was balancing on a chair. It was pre-health and safety. And feeling it was the most brilliant feeling in the world. The first time I had a photograph taken with me and in the staff photograph and with my tutor group, it's all I'd ever wanted to be. And then fast forward to 2011, 2012, and that person didn't exist. I had risen through the ranks of second in department, I've done a stint of head of department, I've done some head of year type stuff, but I fell out of teaching, broken, and a shadow of my former self. I also fell out of my marriage the same month. So when it comes to being at a pretty low ebb, I think I can resonate with a lot of people who are in this group at the moment. But what I did was this, and this is, this is a good piece of advice I will give you. 
instead of coming out of teaching and suddenly saying, I'm going to make a job for myself as a tutor, what I actually did was this. I worked out my absolute bottom line that I needed to achieve. And I can tell you now it was £1,300. That included the rent, it included my bills, everything £1,300. And I considered myself at that point not a tutor, but freelance. Because there are a variety of different ways in which you need to generate that £1,300. You do stuff. You create multiple income streams for yourself, one of which is tuition. You're going to build it to an incredibly lucrative business for yourself. But in the first instance, you're going to do other stuff. You might do two days a week supply. You might do exam marking. You might sign up for the National Teaching and Advisory Service, which is a great um, operation that places teachers into children's homes or hard to reach kids who are school refusers 35 pound an hour plus traveling expenses four hours a day still able to pick the kids up drop them off so i then did a morning intervention um, at a school in flixton and i gathered around me some stuff because i worked out what my baseline was that i had to earn so I didn't come out of teaching with the mindset, which is how do I replace one income stream for another? Because it doesn't work like that. Within no time at all, I had built my one-to-one -one tuition business into a small group tuition business that was so incredibly lucrative. The word thrive doesn't come into it because it can be done. But it's done with a very, very clear mindset. So I'm going to give you some little nuggets of advice that might help you if you're thinking of setting up your own tuition business. Okay, in the first instance, the first thing I want you to do is write on a post-it note, keep it simple, stop overthinking and Google is your friend and you stick that on your screen. And when you're sat there and you haven't even thought of a name for your company yet, and you're worrying about how you're going to pay your VAT, stop overthinking it, keep it simple, and just follow these steps. You can do this from the classroom. There is nothing in teacher's terms and conditions that stops you tutoring, okay? And the best tutors tell their head teachers and face the wrath out of courtesy, I'm letting you know I will be doing some private tutoring. And in the main, the head teacher will say, please don't, um, please don't do it with the pupils at our school because it's a conflict of interest. Fine. You set up your business. So stop thinking of yourself as a teacher, but you're starting a business. You're not just turning up at someone's house with your handbag and a couple of old textbooks. You're setting up a tuition business, but don't let that frighten you. Keep it simple. You go and see an accountant. Walk into one from the high street, email one. And you set yourself up as a sole trader. You don't register with Company House. You don't have to do anything major, but you get an accountant because your accountant is going to do your tax return for you. It's probably about £30 a month. It comes to about £250 a year. But the first thing you do is get an accountant. The second thing you do is get a bank account a business bank account it can be done online in 48 hours the next thing you do after that is you separate an email address you separate a telephone number so one way or another what you have here is you have a separate infrastructure of a new fledgling small business and that's how you start you don't go and design a web page and a website you don't need one absolutely not you then sit down and you sort out your terms and conditions. You don't need to go and see a solicitor. You don't need to go and see a lawyer. It doesn't work like that. They're your terms and conditions because tuition is completely and utterly unregulated. So you put your terms and conditions on your welcome email. And here are some good terms and conditions. The first and foremost is this. You set yourself up with a business PayPal account and you block book four weeks lessons at a time and you never have a child sat in front of you who hasn't paid the parents pay in advance 
and that negates any forms of terms and conditions you are going to need because the main term and condition you need is you haven't paid me and I now need to take action against you and that's never going to happen because nobody's ever going to owe you enough money that warrants you going to a solicitor. So basically, your terms and conditions in the email are, we accept a block booking of four weeks in advance. You will be invoiced on the first Friday of every month and we expect payment before Katie's first lesson on the fifth. Here are the bank details or here's the PayPal account. You're cashless, you don't take cash. Not only is that as a part of your COVID-19 practices, but you want everything going online and upfront. You have a cancellation policy. Whilst we would love Katie to have 100% attendance, we accept there may be times where you have to take a holiday. We allow for two weeks pre-booked holiday, which will be credited to your next month. Unfortunately, if Katie is ill, as a small business, we cannot offer a refund. Believe me, Katie will never be ill. Katie's stomach ache and tummy bug. You're going, I've paid. And then, safeguarding. I have a fully portable DBS. Um, whilst on the call, if you're doing it online, we recommend that you might want to be in the vicinity just to ensure that Katie is well and understand. They're your terms and your conditions. Okay? You might want to put in, I'll require four weeks notice of cancellation. And you do it in such a lovely, lovely way. And then the last bit, so they don't have to sign anything, just says, by sending Katie to her first session with us at Step Ahead Tuition, you will be accepting the terms and conditions in the email. So it's consent by their presence. So that's what you do. You don't have to do a, a major business structure. I want my money up front. I know how I'm going to take payment. I've got a bank account. I've got an accountant. I've got a good infrastructure of my business. And then the next question that's asked is, how do I get the pupils? You get a great business page. You get a great Facebook page. By the fact you're watching me on Facebook, you've got some level of understanding of Facebook. And Google is your friend. If you don't know how to set up a Facebook page, Google it. It's dead easy. And then basically what you do from there is, you set up a really clear and transparent business page that says, um, name of the tuition, put your prices on. I always put my prices on everything because I don't want to be talking to Doreen for 15 minutes about her son and then tell her how much it is and she collapses on the other end of the phone. She needs to know how much it is. And the nights I'm going to do it. And then with your business page, you join community groups in your area. Okay? And on a Monday, you might be able to advertise in Love Limb Locals, so you drop your business page in. You've got word of mouth. You've also got a great little um, part of a website, um, of Google. Google allow you to set up a Google My Business. It's the old style Google local. And basically, you put your business details in, it creates a website for you, but you know when you see someone type into the phone, um, cake shop near me, put the postcode in, press, and these little red pins pop up that's because those businesses have registered with Google My Business. So if you're going to be a local tutor, join Google My Business. If you don't know how to do it, Google is your friend and it's a really great walkthrough. So you've got some, you've got some nice little nuggets there. You find a trailblazer, you find parents in the age group that you're interested in. Can you share my page? And, let, and that's how you start. You just start slowly building a business around you you can still do it from the classroom because what you say is, actually, I only want to do it two nights a week to test the water and see how it's going. Piece of advice I would give you is try and avoid one-to-one -one and start with small group. Start with small group tuition. One-to-one, -to, -one, to be honest, it, it's not financially viable with the demand for tuition. So instead of charging £30 for GCSE for an hour, you charge... 15 pound a child and you have six. And, and you can see then how scalable it is. You have to change your mindset from leaving the classroom and being this overwhelm of being a business owner, but actually take small baby steps. So, so my story was really, really simple. That's exactly what I did in 2013. 
I started around my kitchen table with one-to-one, -one, those slots filled. Then what I did was I grouped them into small groups. And even with four and five at a time, I was still turning children away for tuition. And one of the reasons why that was the case is because of the nature of the tuition I did. I didn't teach these children, I tutored them. I didn't get Macbeth out and start with that one scene one and start reading and saying, what do you think he meant by using thunder and lightning? What I said was, write this down. Shakespeare's use of pathetic fallacy in the up, because that's what they want for tutoring. They, they want everything stripping back from teaching and they want exam focused prep. So within no time at all, children were leaving my house in groups of six. Neighbours loved me, as you can imagine. My kids were going absolutely mad because they couldn't come in the kitchen because that's where I was doing it from. And I was like, get out, get out. So it was becoming, I was actually becoming a victim of my own success. So I then booked a venue, a local church hall opposite the school gates of where my son was starting in year seven. And I teamed up with a really, really great maths teacher. He'd been an advanced skills teacher. He'd come out of teaching pretty much like me. Didn't know what day it was. And very quickly, I, I, I changed my business model. Instead of them paying £15, they paid £30. They got an hour with me, then an hour with the maths tutor, and then we swapped. So you actually got two hours of group tuition. Such was the success of that. And work the pricing out. I'm giving him £60. I'm giving Father Michael eight. I'm coming on with £300 for two hours. Then I end up with another two sets of tutors behind me and another two sets of tutors behind me. And then we have to move to a bigger venue. And then we do it on a Tuesday night and then we do it on a Wednesday night. And realistically, I managed to condense my tutoring. At this point, I've shed things in the day that I was doing. This, at this point, I've managed to condense my tutoring into six hours but we're looking at something ridiculous like 300 children over those six hours because of the amount of tutors that we've got in the spaces on a monday night we've got 12 tutors under one roof and then at that point i've become a limited company i've grown i'm thriving i'm st I've still got my hand in i'm still banging out my quotes on an inspector calls and loving every single minute of it but i'm answerable to nobody i'm in an unregulated environment so quite frankly, I can do, do what I want as long as I know it's the right quality. I'm automated my system. We've got automated enrollment. We've now got a direct debit system. And I've got a really, really slick company that's got a great reputation. And that's when I then decided to expand my company. I started to work with um, a specialist who helped me develop and grow my business. And now what I do is I work with teachers who come on board with my company and, but that's, that's a conversation for another day. This is about how you set yourself up in the first instance. So play back what I've said, get your pen and paper out and take away some of those key nuggets. Keep it simple, separate your business from your personal. Don't overthink what you're doing. Don't overthink the curriculum that you're delivering. And let's face it, in this current climate, the scramble for tuition, both face-to-face -face and online, is huge. If you are thinking of really being serious and setting yourself up with a tuition business, it's not as difficult as you think. It can be done. And what's more, it can bring you a really, really joyous way of life. So that's my story. I'm Sharon and I do the tuition. I'm going to put other people in front of you, do a whole host of other things so that you can start to pick and mix and you can start to ask questions of people who have been where you are now, who have been in some very, very low places. But the key word in the title of this group is they have left the classroom and they thrive. It's been a pleasure. You're going to see a lot of my face um, as the weeks and months go on. But I would like very much to thank you for your time this evening. And if in any way I can be of an assistance, please let me know. Thank you kindly.